Well, there's hope that NASA could regain control of the lost Voyager 2 probe after a heartbeat signal was picked up. Contact with the spacecraft launched in 1977 was lost when a wrong command was sent, tilting its antenna two degrees away from Earth. For nearly half a century, Voyager 2 has been like a message in a bottle, tossed into the cosmic ocean. We packed it with the sounds and sights of Earth, hoping someone, somewhere, would find it. Well, it turns out someone did, but they didn't just read the message, they're writing back. A deeply disturbing signal has been relayed by Voyager 2, a pattern so intelligent and bizarre it has sent shockwaves through the scientific community. They're now warning everyone that this isn't the friendly greeting we hoped for. To put it mildly, our bottle has been returned with a warning inside. The signal that changed everything. You see, the data that streams from Voyager 2 is usually predictable, a faint whisper against the background roar of the universe. But what many overlooked in a recent data dump was a spike, a tiny low-frequency pulse that appeared, vanished, and then appeared again exactly 11.2 seconds later. That's not noise, that's a clock. Engineers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory initially wrote it off. A software glitch, maybe. A sensor hiccup caused by the harsh environment of deep space. These things happen with a machine that's nearly half a century old. But when they ran diagnostic checks, they found nothing wrong with the probe. Then one curious analyst decided to dig into the archives, pulling weeks of old telemetry logs. What they found sent a chill down their spine. The pulse wasn't new. It had happened once before, weeks earlier, but was so faint it was lost in the static and completely missed. This is where things take a turn. Using advanced AI filtering tools, the team isolated the signal and cleaned it up. The picture it painted was, to put it mildly, disturbing. The pulse was not only recurring with the precision of an atomic clock, but it was also growing stronger with each transmission. This wasn't a dying machine's last gasp, it was a crescendo. And the most baffling part? The signal wasn't coming from inside the probe. Triangulation data confirmed its origin was external, somewhere nearby in the void. Many people are crazy about the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, but the thing nobody tells you is what happens when you actually find it. The pulse carried a spectral signature, a kind of cosmic fingerprint, that made no sense. It was centered on the frequency of inverted hydrogen resonance. Hydrogen is the most common element in the universe, the building block of stars and galaxies. But this signal was twisted, its properties flipped upside down in a way that shouldn't be possible in nature. It was as if someone had taken the most fundamental note in the cosmic orchestra and played it backward. The debate inside the agency was fierce. Some called it a new, unexplained cosmic anomaly. Others, speaking in hushed tones, suggested it was something far more deliberate, intentional tampering. Either way, the profound silence of deep space had been broken. It wasn't broken by a roar, but by a whisper that knew how to speak the language of mathematics. The universe was suddenly a much busier and scarier place. The initial report was classified within hours, but the data was too profound to contain. A warning was being drafted, a careful message to the world that something unprecedented was happening billions of miles away. The lonely journey of Voyager 2 was no longer a solo mission, but who or what had joined it in the dark? Codename, Echo Lantern. Once the signal was confirmed to be real and external, the next question was terrifyingly simple. Where was it coming from? Using the Deep Space Network's trio of giant radio antennas in California, Spain, and Australia, Mission Control performed a frequency delay analysis. By measuring the tiny differences in the signal's arrival time at each station, they could triangulate its source with incredible precision. The result was unthinkable. The source wasn't stationary. It was moving along a path almost perfectly parallel to Voyager 2's trajectory. It was tailing our spacecraft. But this was no ordinary object. The thing is, everything in space follows the laws of physics. Planets, asteroids, comets, they all move in predictable orbits and paths governed by gravity. This object, however, defied those laws entirely. It didn't coast. It moved in short, controlled bursts accelerating and decelerating in ways that had no connection to the gravitational pull of any known star or planet. When analysts tried to model its path using standard physics, every single simulation failed. 
What many overlooked was a subtle detail in its movement. The object wasn't just following, it was reacting. Its small course corrections and speed adjustments happened just moments after Earth sent its faint transmission pings toward Voyager 2. It was listening to our commands, studying our methods. This wasn't a shadow, it was a hunter. Within the classified channels of global space agencies, theories exploded. Was it a piece of space junk from some forgotten Cold War mission? A derelict satellite from a civilization that vanished eons ago? Or was it something active, a cloaked surveillance system that had been waiting in silence for decades? Analysts at the Pentagon gave it a code name, Echo Lantern. It was a fitting name, you see, because the object seemed to behave like a phantom. It didn't broadcast its own signal toward us. Instead, it was reflecting Voyager's own data stream back into space, but with its mysterious pulse embedded inside. It was like a cosmic echo chamber, twisting our own voice and sending it back with a new alien message. Whatever this thing was, it was clear that Voyager's faint signal, our message in a bottle, hadn't just been found. It had become a breadcrumb trail, leading something right back to our doorstep. The warning to the world was now becoming more urgent. This wasn't just a mysterious signal anymore. This was an object with intent, an intelligence that was actively studying us from the edge of our own solar system. And it had been doing so, undetected, for an unknown amount of time. The question was no longer just what it was, but what it wanted. The age of blissful ignorance was over, and soon the stalker would reveal it wasn't just following, it was communicating. First contact goes wrong. Just when scientists thought they had time to analyze the echo lantern, the unthinkable happened. Voyager 2 went completely dark, not a blip, not a whisper of static. One moment it was transmitting, the next, there was nothing but perfect, unnerving silence. The initial assumption at ground control was a catastrophic hardware failure. After all, the probe is 48 years old, running on technology less powerful than a modern car key fob. It had lived a good life. But then, the other shoe dropped. A wave of identical anomalies swept across the globe. The deep space network receivers, not just in California, but in Madrid and Canberra too, all reported a total loss of signal at the exact same millisecond. The odds of a simultaneous worldwide equipment failure are, to put it mildly, zero. This wasn't a technical error. Something had surgically severed the connection from the outside with timing that precisely matched the 11.2 second pulse pattern. Five minutes later, the silence was broken. A powerful narrowband radio wave hit Earth from the same part of the sky. It carried no discernible data, but its strength was immense, comparable to signals from distant pulsars. Except this wasn't a neutron star. This was coming from somewhere near Voyager 2. Then, just as suddenly as it went silent, Voyager 2 came back online, but the data it sent back was impossible. The thing is, Voyager 2 doesn't have encryption capabilities. It was built in the 1970s. Yet the binary stream now pulsing back to Earth was encrypted. When a frantic team of cryptographers finally cracked it, they found a rearranged version of the golden record, the message of peace we sent into the cosmos in 1977. Except this version was a nightmare. The audio samples of human voices were played backward. The music was altered in pitch, creating a discordant alien melody. The star charts etched onto the record's cover were reversed, and some coordinates no longer pointed to Earth but to empty voids between galaxies. It was as if our handshake to the universe had been taken, twisted, and thrown back in our face. The message was no longer, here we are. It was, we know where you are. Inside NASA, a chilling discovery was made. Command subroutines and Voyager's onboard computer code that hadn't changed in nearly five decades had been rewritten. Not corrupted, but cleanly, elegantly rewritten with a syntax its own processors weren't designed to understand. Somehow it had received a software update from an unknown source and was now executing commands that were not from Earth. One of those new commands was for long-range transmission, but not toward us. Voyager was now broadcasting a new message into the depths of interstellar space. It was responding and we have no idea what it said. This event triggered something long thought to be a Cold War myth, the Wake Protocol. 
an encrypted directive shared between world powers reserved only for a confirmed context scenario where we are not in control. Global observatories were secretly redirected. Certain radio frequencies were globally suspended. We had lost control of our own emissary. Voyager 2 was no longer ours. It was now a beacon for something else entirely. A Shadow in Old Photographs The hijacking of Voyager 2 was just the beginning. The world's scientific community was reeling, but what came next pushed the boundaries of known physics. For a period of exactly 41 minutes, satellites and ground stations across the planet experienced what is now being called a temporal echo. Live data feeds, not just from Voyager, but from weather satellites, solar observatories, and unrelated deep space probes began to loop. Data packets repeated themselves in perfect, synchronized unison, as if the same moment in time was being played over and over again. You see, this wasn't an archive replay. These were live systems glitching in a way that seemed to defy causality. A small group of theoretical physicists proposed a mind-bending hypothesis. This wasn't a data error, but a controlled ripple in space-time, a localized distortion originating near Voyager's location. If true, it meant the entity interacting with our probe wasn't just intelligent, it was capable of manipulating the fabric of time itself. They gave the incident a code name taken from mythology, Kronos Bloom. Because if time itself could be touched, the fundamental rules of our universe had just been broken. Then it happened. The signal came home. Two remote, low-noise monitoring facilities in Norway and New Zealand picked up a direct transmission. This wasn't a reflection or an atmospheric bounce. A signal entered Earth's atmosphere with laser-like precision, composed of the same subharmonics as the Voyager anomaly. The terrifying part is that it didn't just pass through. It stayed. It embedded itself into our global infrastructure, piggybacking onto oceanic sensors, communication buoys, and even cloud servers. The alien signal was now a permanent ghost-like presence in our digital world. As the world grappled with this digital invasion, a team of independent astronomers in Brazil made a discovery that no one was expecting. While scanning old infrared sky maps from the 1990s, they found something that had been there all along. A faint, cold, dark object on a trajectory that mirrored Voyager 2. It had never been cataloged because it emitted no heat and no light. Analysis showed this object, which they named Echoed Zero, had been trailing Voyager since at least 1981. It wasn't just following, it was moving in a perfect logarithmic spiral, a mathematical pattern of intent. This wasn't a stalker that had recently appeared. It was a ghost that had been in our family photo the entire time. The final piece of the puzzle would come from our most powerful telescope, revealing the true scale of what was coming. Universe holds its breath. The existence of Echo Zero changed everything. It proved this wasn't a chance encounter. In a move that was never publicly announced, the James Webb Space Telescope was redirected. Its target, the vast empty space between Voyager 2 and the coordinates of Echo Zero. What Webb saw wasn't a single object, but a coordinated formation, a field of thousands of reflective masses barely visible, moving together like a school of fish in the cosmic ocean. They weren't orbiting anything. They were drifting with a collective unified purpose. Webb's spectroscopic data delivered an even bigger shock. The chemical signatures of these masses included exotic alloys and elements with half-lives so short they should have decayed billions of years ago. Yet here they were, stable and clustered. The narrative shifted from one probe being followed to our entire solar system being studied by a swarm of silent observers. Our machines had become bait in a trap that was set long ago. The final terrifying event solidified the world's fear. For 18 minutes, radio telescopes in Chile, South Africa, and Australia recorded the complete and total disappearance of the cosmic microwave background, the ancient radiation hiss from the Big Bang. The universe, for all intents and purposes, went silent. When the signal returned, it wasn't the same. It was phase-shifted, slightly warped in a way that perfectly matched the waveform of Voyager's last hijacked transmission. The thing is, many people were now convinced this wasn't a malfunction. This was a reset. 
The universe hadn't gone silent, its background noise had been briefly overwritten to insert something new into the fabric of reality. So, the only question that remains is this. What did we awaken? Are we witnessing the dawn of a new era or the beginning of the end? Let us know your thoughts below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.